Hi, my name's Paul Carr, and I do a podcast called Teacher Tales, T-A-I-L-S, and that would be because of Snoopy there. Um, so there, there are tales that I have had published in legitimate places, so they're vetted. So, for example, um, L.A. Times, Seattle Times, New York Post, uh, Teacher Magazine, Education Week, Christian Science Monitor, Chicken Soup, uh, and others. Um, so, anyway, what I do is I read these stories and then I comment at the end. So, this is my first one that I'm doing on video. Bear with me and we'll see how it goes. So, uh, I, ta yeah, I taught in Samoa at Peace Corps and I taught in American Samoa and I taught in Korea and I taught in England. I uh, grew up in Connecticut and spent many years uh, here in California and in all of those places I taught. So I talk about Korea, New Zealand, love New Zealand, dogs, all the places I taught, kids. Uh, my wife is Korean, so we do a lot of interracial stuff, um, incidents that occur when you're married and um, stuff like that. So here we go. Here's my first one, so let's see. Uh, teacher, were you a racist? On the Friday before Martin Luther King Jr. Day, I asked my fifth graders if they knew why we had the day off. One suggested to celebrate MLK's birthday. And to be honest, for a 10 year old, that wasn't bad at all. No, piped in another, it's because he fought for blacks' rights. And 90% uh, of my kids were Latino. Um, Good, I said, you're 100% right. Let's call the child who piped up with that answer Isaiah. He's perceptive and often sees the big picture. I thought it would be appropriate to show a short clip on both Martin Luther King Jr.'s accomplishments and his many struggles. Many of the kids did not know that he had been stabbed or firebombed. Um, the same film showed the iconic footage of police dogs being set upon blacks and of high pressure water cannons knocking protesters to their feet. Rosa Parks was also mentioned in her famous boycott. My kids made shocked noises now and then. I also let them view a short and appropriate for fifth graders clip about his assassination. I mentioned that when I was a kid, my mom took me from Connecticut, where I live, to Florida on a train. And once we hit the South, bathrooms clearly stated white or colored. Uh, and I honestly told them I was way too young to remember it, but it did occur in my lifetime. So Isaiah raises his hand and he says, teacher, were you a racist? Now, you have to know, there was no malice in this kid. He wasn't being a wise guy. Every child watched me with their predominantly Latino and Latina eyes. And as I said, Isaiah's a brilliant and a great kid. High level thinker, he just put the facts together. Um, he thought, my teacher's an Anglo. Anglos can be racist. He lived then, therefore he might have been a racist, I'm gonna ask. So the quick response out of my mouth was, no, of course not, and then I thought, you know what, uh, this child has just dared to ask you a question from his heart. A question if a teacher had a thinner skin might have gone the wrong way. Isaiah, I said, you make me happy. You always ask good questions. And you know what you just did? You made your old teacher rethink something. So here's my answer, Isaiah, yes. I'm sorry to say, when I think about it, my family and I were ignorant and racist sometimes, but I'd like to hope that I'm not anymore. One of my girls said, that's why you teach us, huh? And I said, yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. And another piped in, and your wife is Korean. And then I thought, oh my God, these kids are coming to my defense. I love these kids. Fifth graders are absolutely wonderful. <coughs> So I said, you know what? We're having recess a couple minutes early, which, which always goes down really well. A shout of communal joy rang out and I dismissed them. And I thought that my moral lesson for the day had been 
learned, oh no, but I was wrong. One girl hung back and waited until all the kids left. Mr. Carr, she said. Martin Luther King, he was shot, right? Yes. Have you ever been shot? Her eyes plumbed my depths. No. <clears throat> my dad was shot. He's in prison now. Alyssa's dad is shot, too. He's dead, you know. Yeah, I knew about her dad. She smiled. And uh, off she trundled. See you after recess. Put her books in her pack, and she was gone. So I had a lot to ponder. So, yeah, that really uh, eats me, and I have trouble getting through that. So, uh, where does one start? Uh, the community that I taught in is right near Salinas, and it is hard-pressed. Uh, there's about 5,000 people live there. And uh, they have many problems there, uh, poverty being one of them. Um, a lot of the parents are border crossers, and they work in agriculture. And they, I'm going to use the word, they slave in agriculture. And they, they mostly here they pick lettuce and artichokes. And, uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. So gangs are just wretched here, just wretched. So mostly we have, they're predominantly Norteños, or a couple Soreños, and then the Salvadorian gang, the Mata Salvatrusa, which is just, they are evil. I mean, no gang is good, but those guys are bad. And anyway, what happens is the kids, if they're not in gangs, they're impacted by it. And um, they all know somebody who's in a gang. And I used to survey my kids all the time. I'd have them put their heads down. And I told them everything about my life that was appropriate. And um, so then I would ask them questions. And um, one time the light clicked in my little brain. And uh, I, I asked, how many of you have ever been to jail? So I had, usually I had 32 kids. And about 11 raised their hands. And one kid was flagging me. And uh, his hand is up. He's waving. He's got a question. Their heads are still all down. He goes, Mr. Carr, what about prison? <sighs> so they're 10 and 11. And they know the difference between jail and prison. So I said, yeah, prison too. Four more hands went up. So 15 kids out of 32 had been in jail to visit a family member by the time they were 10 or 11. And most assuredly, the numbers were higher uh, because some of them were probably brought in as infants and they, they just didn't know. And maybe one or two may have been embarrassed to say anything. So that's my first movie podcast. I'm sorry if I get choked up. I'm, a, I'm an, an old guy and uh, all of these stories that I've written, they mean something to me. So that's the first one, and uh, that's Snoopy. Snoopy's a bull terrier uh, rescue. We've had her for a year. She had a horrible life, but not anymore. So thank you, thank you, thank you, and we'll see how this sounds. Yeehaw.